Well, today um, I wanted to give everybody a little brief introduction to the new lifelong learning program that we have. Um, it's a non-degree program and uh, at the university, and it's an opportunity for you to experience or re-experience the container of the university. The title of it um, is the secret of uh, secrets, and what I'll be doing today is giving you a little taste of what we'll be talking about in the teachings, and an opportunity to experience some of it, and then answer any questions that you might have. The day at the school session is broken for this program is broken into a morning and afternoon session. In the morning session, there'll be two teachings. And in the afternoon session, there'll be reading and writing, um, which is one of the Sufi practices that we do of CDs, um, CDs books that will specifically help to open up those places in your heart that need opening. So with that introduction, um, I'd like to talk about um, the importance of... Um, the human being to know what the human being's business is within this universe, to understand our existence and to understand its purpose. Because that's really how we um, open up to being a servant of God, that this is the way that we begin to feel the warmth of our Creator and where the inner meanings start to come. So um, there's a, um, a, a... I'll be quoting a couple of Quranic ayats during the teachings. So one of the things that's important to understand is that Allah made bodies for the soul to enter. And each of these souls has a different name. And he built different spaces within the body. He put, Allah placed the human soul, the soul of life, between the flesh and the blood, and, and our blood. And he placed the Holy Spirit within the center of the heart, where between that, he built a space of we could call it fine matter, to keep the secret between Allah and his servant. So in this program, we're going to be diving into this secret of secrets. Um, I'll also um, be talking about the souls that are in different parts of the body and what their duty is and what their different business is um, so that we can really understand Allah's bounty and blessings. It says in Surah Fatah and Surah 29, out of what we have provided for them secretly and openly, that they hope for the commerce that will never fail. And this is uh, what he's really talking about here, is the different, different souls. And these are all related to the different qualities. Our, our Prophet Muhammad says that um, Allah Most High has 99 names. Whoever learns them enters paradise. He also says that the knowledge is one so that and that men of knowledge made it a thousand. And what he means by that is the that the name that belongs to the essence is only one, 
but it's reflected as a thousand attributes in those who receive it. So we'll be um, today talking about um, the divine names that are within the origin of our confession of unity, La Ilaha Illallah. And each one of them, um, there are letters in that phrase that um, and Allah has given a different individual name to each letter in the development of our heart. And each of the four realms in which the soul passes also has different names. So Allah Most High in this way holds the hearts of the lovers firmly in the love. He says in, in uh, Surah Ibrahim and Surah 27, Allah will establish in strength the hearts of those who believe with the word that stands firm in this world and the hereafter. He gives us the gift of his intimacy and he sets the tree of unity in our heart. And this tree, its roots descend to the, see, describes the seven levels beneath us and the branches to the seven heavens above us, up to the divine throne, and perhaps even higher. Uh, In Quran and Surah Ibrahim again, in um, Ayah 24, he says, uh, Set thou not on how Allah sets forth a parable of good word as a good tree, whose root is firm and whose branches are high. So what I'd like to talk about today and to give you a little taste of is um, what CD calls and and the secret of the secret is the the passionate soul. And it's this passionate soul that really opens up our um, servitude to Allah. So I want you all to just take a moment and just let yourself feel feel your heart. Feel the beauty that Allah placed inside your heart. When Allah created you, and we're just going to do a little bit of La Ilaha Illallah, just to open up before I talk about the passion soul and the secret of the secret. My voice may get a little soft when I'm uh, transmitting, for those of you that aren't used to my teaching. And no, not to worry, just continue to do the chanting of La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Ilah, 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 ilah
So this is a place within your soul that is really within the life of the heart. The angelic realm is constantly within its view. It can see the paradises of that realm, its inhabitants, its light, and all the angels within it. It's a speech of the inner world, so it doesn't have many words or sound. Its thoughts are constantly concerning the secrets of hidden meetings. It's um, it's in a paradise that's known as Ma'im, the garden of the delights of Allah's grace. And as we move deeper into the soul, into the center of your heart, what Sidi calls the heart of the heart, this is the divine wisdom. And in this place, the work is to know all of the divine knowledge and true devotion. in the language of the heart. The Prophet explains this by saying, knowledge is in two sections. One is in a man's tongue, which is a confirmation of Allah's existence, and the other is in man's heart. And the one that is in our heart is the one that's necessary for the realization of our goal. The true beneficial knowledge, the Prophet says, is only within the framework of the heart's activity. So that the Holy Quran has an outer meaning and an inner meaning. Allah Most High revealed in the Quran ten layers of hidden meanings. Each successive meaning is more beneficial than the one before because it's closer to the source of truth. And these 12 divine names that we'll be um, discussing and learning more about in the course belong to the essence of the law, and they're like the 12 fountains which gushed forth from the stone when the Prophet Musa hit it with his staff. The outer knowledge of appearances, it's like rainwater. The inner knowledge is like a fountain whose source never dries up. So that's why we're delving deep into this inner knowledge. Allah says in Surah Yasin, in uh, Surah 33, And a sign for them is the dead earth. We give it life to it and bring forth from it grain so that they can eat of it. Allah created the grain, a seed in the sky. And that seed became the strength of the animal in man. And then he created the seed in the realm of the souls. And that's the source of the strength of the food of the soul. And that grain is watered by the source of of wisdom. In this soul, we find rapture and love that we feel watching the manifestation of Allah's beauty, grace, and perfection. We study in in Surah Naj, Surah 5, Ayat 11. Allah says, One mighty in power has taught him the lure of strength, so he attained perfection, and he is in the highest part of the horizon. Then he drew near, drew yet nearer, so that he was the measure of two bows, or closer still. So he revealed to his servant what he revealed. The heart was not untrue in seeing what it saw. The prophet described this in another way. He said, the faithful is a mirror of the faithful. And in this, the second faithful that he's referring to is the heart of the believer. 
and um, this heart of the believer is reflected on on the heart in Allah the Most High. So we'll be learning more about this quality of the faithful or the guardian of the faith. And just allowing yourself, we're going to take another deep step into your heart. And in this place is where what's known as the Holy Spirit in some traditions reigns. It's a secret place that Allah made for himself in the center of the heart where he deposited his secret, the seer, for safekeeping. The state of this is described by Allah speaking through the Prophet Salam. Man or woman is my secret and I am the secret of them. This is the place that truth is obtained by achieving unity. It brings multiplicity into unity by continuously reciting the names of unity in the language of the divine secret. Allah says in Surah Taha, ayat 7, And if you utter the saying aloud, surely he knows the secret, and yet what is more hidden. So Allah hears the language of this Holy Spirit in the soul. The beauty of this soul is the vision of the first created creation. It's where Sidi derived our names from, for those of you that took the Shadalia Sufi promise. What it sees is Allah's beauty. To it belongs the secret vision. Seeing and hearing become one. There's no comparison, no resemblance to anything. It sees Allah's ab- attribute of might and wrath as one with his attributes of beauty, grace, and mercy. When we find this home within our our heart, our our worldly mind comes under Allah's command. This is the station of Slavehood, and our hearts are in awe, and our tongues are often tied. When our ears know this, they try to understand from the level of knowledge, but they bring all our attention to the true reality of things in their full horizon so that we reach a new level of knowledge of what the divine providence is. And in that, we seek to find even more unity. The passionate soul is sometimes described as a subtle vapor that exists behind life, sensory perception, and voluntary movements. It's what um, some philosophers have called the vital spirit. It's an essence whose influence shines upon our body. And when this influence involves our both our body's outward and inner aspects, the result is our waking state. You know, that's why we call it, that's why Rumi says, wake up, wake up. Don't fall asleep. Don't go back to sleep. Don't go back to sleep. So the traveling and the purpose of traveling on the Sufi path is to raise this, this, this divine to its original decree by the use of the qualities, our zikr, our reflection, um, and all the other beautiful things that um, C 
Judy gave us. The essence that I'm talking about um, here in our passionate soul is the inner aspect of the seer because the seer, the secret, has its own inner aspect, which is the secret of the secrets, the seer, el seer. And this is the focus of what our, our six days will be, will be all about. So, um, so we'll be looking at, and we'll be diving deep into the inner, the inners of things. And the inners of things is really its reality and substance. So, um, let me see if I can um, give it clearer by an example. So I'm sitting on a bed right now, so I'll use that as an example. Um, so my bed here has pieces of wood, and the inward of that is the trees, and the inward of the trees is the four elements, and the inward of those four elements is uh, what's known as the hayula, or the primordial matter, and this is a very, very, very subtle, and that's why it's called the secret of the secret. So Sidi's new book, Walking the Path of Sufism, describes the qualities of the servant or the slave. So he says, um, if you search for yourself, you will not find anything other than a law. This means that you will find a law instead of yourself and only your name remains without any picture because all existence is not yours. It is the law's. Therefore, if you begin searching for what lies inside you and you remove what is not for a law, you will find that the self, the nafs, is like skins of an onion. And when you peel the onion, You must take away the first skin, then the second, and then the third, until nothing remains of the onion. And this is the case of the servant of the law with the existence of the truth. One of your qualities is that of being without essence, for you have imagined your essence, existence, as though you existed. But this existence is lacking, and it's only affirmed and made true through its creator. Otherwise, it would vanish and disappear from sight. Rabia Adawiya, one of the Sufi saints, may Allah be pleased with her, once met one of the knowers and asked about his state. He answered, I follow the path of the obedient, for I have not committed any sin since Allah created me. She answered him by saying, Be careful, my son, for your very existence is a sin not to be compared with any other. Because in this, what she's talking about here is the non-existence of the servant and the poverty so that we can come to the truth, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the world of unity. And we can't do that if we give Uh, truth to our own existence. We can't have two existences in the existence of the unity. So Sidi goes on to say, So my beloved, follow the path of the people of the unity. Do not ascribe existence to anyone but Allah. For if any one of us folks ascribed existence to himself, he's made a partner with Allah, and may Allah preserve us from that. says, um, the, the ordinary people cannot escape from ascribing existence to things other than Allah, even if it were to that of a faithful king or a prophet ordained, 
or to anything which cannot harm or does not possess usefulness, nor is able to create a fly, although they brought everything that they possess in order to do it, all of which is other than a law. Therefore, know your incapacity and powerlessness, and then a law will give you a law's power. So one of the qualities of the servant is to dislike all that the self wills, and this dislike is a quality of the qualities of the truth. Mighty and powerful is a law. So if you claim that you have a will which is your own, then, O oh servant, you ascribe to your Lord something other, and in this case you will not succeed because it is impossible for you. So know your capability and what is permitted to you and do not fall down in the eyes of your Lord. The one who surrenders to Allah's will lives in peace, while the one who fights against Allah is imprisoned by struggling and distress. Allah, powerful and mighty as he says, O my slave, you desire and I desire. And if you surrender to me in what I desire, I will give you what you desire. But if you battle with me in what I desire, I will make fire for you in what you desire, and nothing but what I desire will be. So Sidi says, So surrender you will to Allah. Do not choose any action other than what Allah wishes for the knowers of Allah, the nourishing of the will, And the fighting against destiny is the quality of the one who is ignorant and foolish. In the beginning, he writes, it's necessary for the will of the seekers to be directed toward what Allah wishes so that in the end he's deprived of any will of the self. His will becomes the will of Allah, and this is what Allah has willed for him from the beginning and to it is their goal. Because whoever in the end still possesses a will has strayed from the path of Allah. So know your quality, my beloved, which is necessary for you to destroy in the beginning so that you can be in accordance with the attribute of the will of Allah. That's the first quality, a strong quality of the slave. I'll just finish with a little statement from Sidi about the importance of the qualities. The other thing that um, we'll be looking at in these 12 qualities that I was describing earlier is also the four elements of each of those 12 qualities um, and how to use them in healing. So, to finish up, just finish a CD's transmission here. He says, My beloved, it's important that you make sure of your qualities and that you look at the beginning of your existence with the eye of your heart at the point when you were brought out into existence from non-existence. So what is he talking about there? He's talking about um, the place where we first came into um, our being as we know it. He says, if you make sure of your qualities, Allah will expand you with his attributes. Some of your qualities are those of non-existence, and this is your description and the description of the world as a whole. So in understanding what he's talking about in the sentence, I don't know how many of you have ever heard our guide say, this is all illusion, this is all illusion, this is all illusion. So he wants us to keep connecting to what's real. And in that, um, he, he says, um, If you affirm your non-existence, Allah will expand you with his existence. 
How can you ascribe existence to yourself when the proof of your existence is in how you appeared in this world? You are a created being. And from yourself's math, you can know that yesterday you were non-existent. This is passed down to all human beings from eternity before any word was spoken. So who was the one who made you manifest? Who made you to appear? If it were not for Allah's appearance and all appearance, that which is seen would not be seen. For this reason, some say, Allah is the creator of all things. He is the eye of their existence. And if not for Allah's existence, they cannot be seen in their existence. So it's important for us to know and understand who caused the manifest manifestation of things. That nothing can have true existence unless it be a law and nothing can be affirmed unless it's through Allah's affirmation, as C.D. writes. He says, You manifest yourself in things when you created them, and lo, in them the veils are lifted from your very self. You have taken away your veils through them. You have cut out mankind as a slice from your essence, and he has remained joined to you at the same time. He is neither joined to you, nor is he separate from you. One of the great um, Sufi masters um, said, purity in no kindness, no wind, no light, no fire, no spirit, no body, everything that is other than the everlasting is an occurrence brought into being. For for those that are exploring the secret of the secret, for those of us of people of the heart, they are just these occurrences are just manifestations, just waves on the surface of the ocean. So what I'm I'm hoping is that all of you will feel the ocean and not swim on the waves on the surface of the ocean because that is where our our real life is, our real slavehood and our real service to the world. <clears throat> 